So you're thinking of coming to Sri Lanka, but you're not really sure what to expect. As you can see, you can then jump on the train like we have done, and you can still enjoy all of the amazing views all the way to Ella. Maybe you're looking for all of the famous Instagram hotspots. Or maybe you're looking for adventures on the roads less traveled. Whatever it is that you're looking for, we're going to share with you our honest experiences in this wild and colorful country. And because we are the budgeteers and we specialize in having bigger and better adventures on less money, we're doing all of this on less than a thousand dollars each. So sit down and relax and join us on this epic journey around Sri Lanka. Okay, Ty, do the honors. Roll that intro. Woo! Boom! Series 4 was made possible thanks to Sri Lankan Airlines, providing convenient and cheap connections to the island. Book your flights with Sri Lankan Airlines. We're also brought to you by Wondergo, the must-have app for any digital nomad. Discover destinations, workspaces, accommodation and much more. Download it for free from the App Store today. Previously on The Budgeteers. After spending just over the past three weeks driving around this beautiful island, we feel that we have really gotten to know this country as we've done so much and gone so far. From the downtown streets of Colombo to wild camping on the beaches of the north. From feeling wild and free in Jaffna to the queues and madness of more popular tourist towns. We found peace and tranquility in the lesser known mountain ranges but we also tested ourselves physically and mentally as we climbed some incredible mountains and unbelievable structures. And finally, after having a really interesting experience trying out two of Sri Lanka's wild safaris, we were finally heading towards Sri Lanka's most popular region, the southern coast. Stretching from Yala National Park all the way across the south and back up towards Colombo, this coastline boasts an endless amount of beaches and historical towns surrounded by crystal clear waters and white sandy beaches. We were sure that coming here with the last of our budget would be a wiser decision because we knew we could really use every last penny as prices for food and activities are certainly much higher in this region. So let's pick it up as we pull over for some lunch and as we are on the lookout for a cheap hostel in a great location. have arrived in the southern Sri Lankan region. <laughs> we just saw our first touristy beach and it looked amazing actually. Surfing, uh, gorgeous seawater, beautiful sand. This area is called Dick Weller. It's just where we're stopping for lunch today. But pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Pretty nice was Patty's way of saying pretty freaking amazing because this coastline was far surpassing any of our expectations. And as we drove along the winding road along this coast, we were seriously blown away by just how stunning everything was. We just needed to figure out which town was the best place to set up our base so that we could properly explore this province. 
we decided our best bet was Midigama, a small surfer's town nestled right in the middle between Gaul and Marissa, two of the most popular places here on the south coast. We found ourselves a great hostel and bartered for a great price for a double room. And once we got settled in, we wasted no time heading to the beach to celebrate our first southern sunset together. And to enjoy what is certainly going to be some of the most amazing few days of this entire travel series. Yeah, the hostel, apart from uh, having a lovely room, actually is in a really good location. We're literally across the street from this beach and there's a cheap food place where we can get kotu and egg hoppers in the morning. We're just really excited to show you the south. We are right next to Marissa and Gaul, so knowing the budgeteers, we're gonna explore all the touristy spots, see what they're actually like, and explore all the hidden gems with our tour. Cheers guys, well done, we made it. Exactly. It was a great feeling to be able to enjoy a cold beer on the beach and head out for a quick little surf on the calm afternoon swell. The waves were small today but still so much fun to practice on and very soon we got to enjoy a fantastic sunset as the dark red sun sank beneath the horizon. It really did set us up nicely for the next few days exploring this idyllic coastline. We have our very own Mama Zita, our tuk tuk. It's bittersweet because we only have four days left with her before our uh, rental agreement. Our rental agreement. We can only afford 30 days, um, and uh, she's a bit battered and she's dirty. Just how we like her. And we get to work on our tans. <laughs> We're starting off by discovering Marissa. So onward. Let's get in the tuk tuk. Get in the tuk tuk. In the ship, matey. Aye. Aye, aye. aye, aye. aye, aye. aye. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Budgeteers travel tip. Uh, we're just stopped here at this local place where we often eat our lunch, and um, inside you can get a really cheap buffet for only 250 rupees, which is just about one and a half dollars. And we usually eat this every day because this is the most delicious Sri Lankan food you'll get. You'll find these places actually just outside of the cities. That's where we found that it's the mo it's the best price and quality. Really easy to park up your tuk-tuk, go inside and you'll eat in less than five minutes straight away. And just like that, you have a delicious local uh, lunch here in Sri Lanka. Yep. This is our bread and butter and this will be your bread and butter if you come to Sri Lanka. And, uh, Let's and two dollars. So we are getting happily fat on this stuff, so I'm gonna try this. In no other country that we've traveled to, right, do you drive into a buffet, fill your plate with delicious spicy food, You're so built for being on a road trip, you know, you don't have to wait for food to be cooked, you just see what they've got, you chuck it on your plate and you eat as much as you can. Try it. We're just saying that you're disgusting because that's the fifth plate you've had. <laughs> <laughs> Lena fancies that guy. 
No, no, the other Oh, the other guy. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> at this point, I fancy everyone. And just like that, we have finished our delicious lunch. Not only did we leave with our bellies full, but Lena left with her heart broken. <laughs> so broken. broken? Why is it broken? Because you'll never, ever be able to have a boyfriend who's good looking as those guys. Why? Because of your work schedule and your lifestyle. <laughs> Just 20 minutes later, we arrived at Marissa. It's kind of built up and not the most photogenic when you first arrive. But don't worry, I promise that if you keep walking through, you will find some beautiful white sandy beaches. It's clearly Sri Lanka's most touristy beach town, and we found it really difficult to find any quiet spots near the main area where all the bars and restaurants are. But since we had our cooler full of water and snacks, we just kept walking until we found somewhere quieter. We found a beautiful spot and some locals told us that nearby there were turtles feeding just off of the beach. So Patty grabbed his GoPro and went on the lookout for some green turtles. Okay, where did the turtles go? <laughs> where is he? Can you see him? Clearly the water was choppy and very murky, so visibility was low. And to be honest, I just lay in a nearby hammock, enjoying the views and laughing at Patty's futile attempts to try and find turtles without goggles or a snorkel. Eventually it dawned on him too, and so he came back and rented snorkeling gear and headed back out. And to be fair, it wasn't long until Patty actually had a really nice encounter with a feeding turtle. He came back running to get us and we couldn't resist to join him and so we all managed to swim near these gorgeous creatures. snorkeling and relaxing at this beautiful beach, it was time to head back towards the bars and enjoy a happy hour beer. We are budgeteering this touristic place. We have found a place with happy hour that sells beer at the same price or cheaper as the bottle shop. And with this view, buy a beer. Of course, Marissa is super touristy, but it's clean and the beer is cheap. Cheers. Lena, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna pour you a beer right now. <laughs> Cheers, Lena. Hey. Cheers. So it was actually super budgeteer friendly, and we got incredible views to go along with our frosty friends. Just over from the main beach, we could see Coconut Hill, a really famous place here in Marissa and a really popular Instagram spot. We saw large numbers of people heading that way and since happy hour was finished, we thought why not go join them and see what all the fuss is about. currently at one of Instagram's biggest hotspots. Yeah, we thought there were going to be a lot more people. We heard there were like 200 people up here at a time. Yeah. And it is busy, but it is lovely, so it's yeah. nice. And it's not that busy. I love people watching and like some of the people here are like, you know, giving it these ones and it's really fun to watch because yeah. it's like, you know, it's entertainment at the end of the day. Don't it's very romantic. No, 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 no. <laughs> Give no. me a kiss. No. Me. You said I was only an 8.9. 8 point, I said she. I said Lena was an 8.9 and a 9.2 with makeup on. So you said 9.4, now you're going down? Well, 
can't make Ty's feel bad because I told him he was a 10. Two beers in, guys. <laughs> Two beers. I'm just okay. trying to get, because like, you're so in the shot and I'm not that in the shot. <laughs> if you're watching this in edit, <laughs> I'm the only one sober over right now. I am sober. I am. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, Coconut Tree Hill is actually a really beautiful place. And if you do wait around long enough, you can enjoy it with much less people. Hi, Captain. As the crowds thinned out, you could really see why this place is so popular and Ties had another thing on his mind that he was also getting quite excited about. You've heard that they have really really good seafood over here and you can barter to get a better price. We think we can get a good platter for yeah. about ten dollars each. A little budgetier challenge. And so with this challenge in mind and with the sun's last rays lighting up the sky we headed back to the main beach in search of a delicious seafood meal but on a budget of less than ten dollars a person. This has a, a meager selection. He's yummy. I've eaten him before. We're going over to restaurant number three. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, 1,000 for a lobster. He's like, go somewhere else. <laughs> We're in restaurant number four. You can share this one. It's like yeah. two people. It's yeah, yeah. for like 3,000. 3,000. Chips and salad. Let's go down a little bit because we got quoted 2,000. Like the first place. For, for, it was a little bit smaller than this. Yeah. But it was 2,000. What about 3,000 of this and then a four? Is this one? Mm. Maybe a jumbo four. These two? Um, we get two for this. It's quite small. Two? It's just this big here. 3,000 and then chips, salad, everything. <laughs> so I give you all of the things? I know. Do you really enjoy your meal? Yeah. Don't think about 200. Can you please come down a little bit? Just a little bit, like two, five. So let's say we'll just check the last place and if we can get 3-5 in the last place we'll come back to you. You can check the fish. They're all really really fresh by it because their eyes look really really clear. Sometimes it's really hard to walk away when the people are so nice and the fish look so delicious. Everything. Yeah? Yeah. Say what you want about a little patty, his bartering skills might not be perfect, but getting us that amount of fresh seafood and way under our set budget of $10 per person was a pretty good effort. There's a few good lessons you can learn from him. Just approach bartering with a positive outlook and a cheeky smile. Just relax and hold your ground and with some patience you'll be sure to get the best price. The restaurant was packed and the atmosphere was awesome and when the food arrived we feasted on our seafood together with Lena's veggie curry. Later that night I drove the guys back in the tuk-tuk, the 15 kilometers or so along the coast to our hostel in Midigama, ready for another beautiful adventure tomorrow. another day here in the south coast of Sri Lanka. We are having a really nice day. We actually woke up uh, quite early. I had a really nice morning surf on the beach just right next to our hostel over here. Bit of a refreshing course on what surfing's like. Really beautiful. And we're now enjoying company of uh, Aninda. 
who's uh, joined us. Uh, cheers. <laughs> you may have seen him before. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy to always meet up with the budgeteers. I'm like their professional stalker now in Sri Lanka. It's kind of weird, but... You meet a lot of new people, like new, uh, new travelers on the road, or you meet the same ones. I think what the budgeteers is, they do leave like a bo like a beer trail, like a beer bottle throughout the country, and you can just follow it, and eventually you will find them. Ta-da! <laughs> beer bottles and when and we're not drinking beer, we're eating. And this food just looks amazing. I got a vegetarian burger, and... Uh, Ty's got some massive tandoori, tandoori prawns, mm -hmm. and uh, Patty got a Thai salad because he's missing his roots. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to eat, and then we're gonna go explore Gaul. Yeah, we've got a mission plan for today. We're gonna explore the old Dutch colonial town of Gaul, which is on the southwest of Sri Lanka. And we're gonna hop in our tuk-tuk together with uh, Aminda and, this, and go exploring. But first, we're gonna all smash dishes. Yes. Bon appetito. Yeah, this lunch was just as amazing as it looked. Spicy, fresh seafood is one of our favorite parts of Sri Lankan cuisine, for sure. Then it was time to jump in our trusty tuk-tuk once more and start our journey west towards Gaal. Gaal is a must-visit town on this coast as it shares a lot of history and it's absolutely stunning. And as soon as we arrived, we decided to try and walk off that lunch by exploring the outer walls of this fortified settlement. Gaal reached its height of development in the 18th century during the Dutch colonial period. The town was extensively fortified by the Dutch and it still remains one of the largest fortified settlements in all of Asia. The high walls and ragged rocks that surround the center were not only really nice to walk around but also really fun since it sort of took you back in history to the old colonial times. Today of course Gaal has a very different atmosphere. It does attract a lot of tourists. But surprisingly there is also a lot of hidden alleys and nice green open spaces that plenty of locals use to practice cricket and just hang out and enjoy. There's also about three tiny little beaches here where again the locals were taking full advantage of and everyone looked like they were having the time of their lives enjoying this beautiful afternoon. All this walking and exploring around did mean it was soon time for a well-deserved ice cream. Our ice cream didn't last very long. God is... Great, we give it a thumbs up. Why? Is it because it's a beautiful colonial town? No. Got a beautiful fort? No. Beautiful lighthouse? No. Delicious ice cream? Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and Ninda, do you give uh, girls ice cream a thumbs up? Uh, I give Sri Lanka's ice cream a thumbs up. <laughs> We've just been like walking around in complete awe, haven't we? Yeah, it's really it's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And the color of the water is amazing. Mm -hmm. The Dutch did it right. <laughs> There's even beaches that go around the fort, so you can come here and chill, which I think we might do later. Because it is beautiful. We had no idea Gull was going to be this gorgeous. And that ice cream gave us just the boost we needed to keep on exploring. we could see another beautiful beach and since we had our Zita we decided to pop over and check it out. This beach is called Jungle Beach and it's right next to Gaul. We can see Gaul right over there. We thought we was, this was gonna be secluded but there are a few shops over here. Jungle Beach was stunning and the vibes were really chilled, but we stupidly didn't bring our swimsuits, so we couldn't fully enjoy the beach. 
Guys, if you are coming to Gull just for the day like we did, don't make the same mistake and bring your swimsuit. We had no idea Gull had so many amazing beaches and we were totally unprepared. Instead, we actually just headed back to Gull Town to enjoy the rest of the afternoon and keep exploring this picturesque town. Okay, we just finished our walk around this beautiful town. Oh. But what are your impressions of it? Quaint. Very quaint. Quaint European small colonial town. Yes. Use every buzzword in one second. <laughs> ching ching. Yeah, I think he's right. It has some European feel to it. Very tropical, very southern, very quiet. It is touristy, but we don't feel overcrowded. I felt really at peace here. Yeah, I definitely think it's worth coming to Gal. Um, maybe if you're a budget traveler, maybe not spending the night in Gal. It seems more expensive than the rest of the uh, southern towns. Uh, but definitely worth coming and seeing. It's really, really beautiful. Since it is so expensive, yeah. we're actually gonna head back to where we're staying, to where the hostel is, and we're gonna get some beers. Yeah, and... there was a sunset yeah. on the beach. Yeah. As you can see, the south coast of Sri Lanka is incredible, and the two main towns of Marissa and Gaul are not to be missed. Of course, there are dozens of other towns and countless beaches to explore, and we actually recommend you take more time than we did to explore the coast. We recommend about a week or even two if you have the time. Surrounded by all this tropical paradise, it was time to enjoy our beers and take in our last sunset together on this idyllic coastline. Thanks again for watching and if you did enjoy this episode then please help and support us by giving us a like, subscribe to our channel and turn that bell on so you never miss an episode. You can also support this channel by picking up some Budgeteers merchandise. There are loads of awesome designs and some brand new product lines available including stickers now so make sure to head over and check them out. And if you've enjoyed the music in this episode, we use Epidemic Sound for all of our videos actually now, and you can get a 30-day free trial below to help level up your content, whatever that may be. But for now, we'll just leave you with this teaser for next week's episode and a simple question for you to answer. What's the most stunning coastal town you've ever visited? We'd love to know, and we will see you next week for the last episode of Series 4, guys. Okay, have a great week.